Hello, this is Brian Eslick here from How To Automotive. Today I'm going to bring you a little step-by-step -step, uh, brake job on a 2005 uh, Land, Land Rover Range Rover. Uh, to get started, we've obviously racked it up and took the wheels off. And um, next thing to do is we're going to remove the brake pads first. And we'll start by knocking the pins out here and here. Well, the tool you'll need is a punch like so. And you'll put it right where the pin is and you'll hit it with a hammer and drive this pin out. At the same time, with your other hand, with your free hand, or after you knock the initial pop through, you'll use your fingers and you'll push down on this clip and the uh, pin will slide out. Okay, as you can see, the, I, I hit the pin a little bit here and it drove it out a little bit. Let's see how that one's flush like that. So now that it's driven out a little bit, you're going to Put your point with your free hand you'll push in on the metal tab and then with your other hand you'll pull it out okay once you get the pin out the pin slides out completely this this uh clip here is it's, it holds the pressure on the brake pads from rattling around it's so it's got quite a bit of pressure on it it'll it'll come up like so and you can unhook it like like so and it'll come out so now we need to compress the uh, brake pads back in. What I do is I get two pry bars like so and hook them in the pads and squeeze them until I get a gap between the brake pads. So now I got my pry bars in between the brake pads like so and pried the pads back into the calipers. And if you notice, I left the top pin in. That helps keep everything in line while you're doing this. So you fry it until it's both brake inner and outer brake pads are fully seated. And once that's done, you can take out the top pin and take the pads out. So now that I've got my pads out, the next step would be is to remove the two 16 millimeter bolts on the back of the caliper. See if I can shine it back here and see if you guys can see it. Yeah, so it'll be like that, and one at the top and one at the bottom. Okay, after uh, taking out your two 16 millimeter bolts, you want to take your caliper, kind of just set it up there on top of the uh, backing plate like that. You don't want it to hang by the brake line; it's not good for it. So, uh, so and most times I would uh, use a bungee cord, but this the case there's nothing really to hook it to, so I just rested it up here. And then we're going to take a six millimeter Allen and take the one bolt out of that holds the caliper on. I mean the rotor on. We'll take that out. Like so. And we'll take our rotor off and we're going to replace the rotor with a brand new rotor. European cars, I like we pretty much 80% of the time you end up changing the rotor anyway because they develop these really large grooves and they work pretty easy because they're very soft metal and they wear fast. Part of the reason why they stop so good is because they're soft metal and they, but uh, they do wear out fast and most of the time you end up just replacing the rotors anyways. So one of the keys to doing a really quality brake job is when you Put your new rotors and parts on. Just try not to touch the surfaces with your, with your hands if possible and get grease or dirt on them. The grease and dirt that you uh, get on it when you uh, start breaking it, it uh, develops squeaks in those areas. So the key to not having a squeak and break is a uh, great job is to keep it clean. So I'm about to put the caliper back on and uh, before you do, it's a good idea to put a little blue uh, Loctite uh, thread sealer on the uh, threads to help prevent the bolts from backing out. Just a little insurance. So after bolting your caliper back up and torquing it down, the next step is to put uh, brake pads in. And before you do, you want to use a little, um, <clears throat> uh, especially designed grease for brake caliper or for brake jobs. It's made by Seal Glide. It's like a silicone-based uh, grease. You want to put a little bit on the back of the pan on the pads. But uh, like I said before, with the rotors, you, you absolutely do not want to touch the surface of the uh, brake pads if you can possibly help it. You don't want any grease or dirt on, the, on that. So after you put a little bit of thin layer of grease, it helps reduce squeaks and stuff. You put your uh, calipers back in, your pads back in the calipers. Next, we'll put the top pin back in. So the top pin. They have, the pins have these little these little flare things, these are, the, these are what actually holds it in place. So you'll line up your uh, brake pads 
and you slide your pin back through. Okay, after uh, putting your top pin in, you want to take your punch and hit it until that is countersunk into the caliper a little bit. Put your hammer, just hammer it in. So that's how it'll look when it's countersunk in there. The pin. Okay, after getting your pin in, you want to take your your rattle, rattle clip here again. You want to put it in like so. Put it right on top of the pads like so, and you'll spring load it down, and you'll put the the second pin in. So you'll push it in with your fingers and put it in. You have to use two hands. One hand to push the, the the clip in, and one to push the pin in. And then once you get it in there, seated in in the corners here, then you can use your hammer and punch and seat it. And that's pretty much it for the passenger side of the vehicle. It's done. All you do is put your wheel back on, torque the wheel back down. The only difference on the on the driver's side is it has a, uh, a pad sensor, a wear indicator sensor, that you'll have to plug, unplug and plug in with a new one. So on the driver's side, I got the um, got the old pad here, and you can see the sensor. It's in, it's in the pad. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the... Um, I have what it is, it routes from the from the couch, from the inner pad to the top of the breather screw to a little bracket here, goes here, goes behind the uh, behind the strut, and, a, and, you, and there's a little door right here on the inside of the splash shield. You pop it down, and this is where you connect it. So I'm going to show you walking through uh, reinstalling the new one. So the new one. The little sensor has this little nipple on it that goes towards the brake pad. So you're going to put it in the brake pad like so. You just push it in like so. And you'll route this up and through the, uh, right here where the bleeder screw is, it has a little uh, little cap that you route. Put that over and that holds that in place. Connects is this little rubber grommet that mounts. Like so, then it'll pop in the um, little bracket like so, and it'll flip up, and uh, there's a little hook where the grommet went, so it kind of has to fit it through the brake line, brake hose here, like so, pop that in there, so now that's routed through, and now you'll route the rest of it. And plug it into the um, to the male end of the sensor. You plug that in. They all they do is uh, you just line up the this little little groove tab here with the one on on the on the new one, and you just push them together. And you'll hear them uh, make a little kind of a click noise. Okay, once you get those in, you'll put the, the rubber grommet in the back of the little thing and put it back in its little housing, and then you'll. Push the door shut and that's it. You just reinstalled your brake pad lining sensor. And with that, the brake job is pretty much done. We just put the wheels on and uh, go test drive it. I'm going to pump your brake pedal before. If you, uh, and in this case, I did not open the bleeder screws, so I shouldn't have to bleed the, the calipers. But if sometimes if people like to uh, open the bleeder screws when they press the, the pads in, that's kind of up to you. I don't do it like that, but. You can do it that way. You'll have to bleed the brakes, but um, that's it. Um, as usual, it's my pleasure bringing, uh, sharing my experience with you guys. And uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below, and uh, I get back to you. And I'd like to thank you for watching my videos and remind you to subscribe and check us out on uh, Facebook and uh, and my website at howtoautomotive.com. And thank you again.